And with that, our Torah service is concluded. Esther, Mazal Tov for your leadership. What a celebration. Esther will come back with her mom, Wendy, and with her brother, Benny, for the Kiddush at the very end of the service, as I now transition just to a short teaching in honor of our Torah reading. Now, I don't know how many of you watching grew up with in a conservative synagogue in America, but if you did, this was the prayer book you used. I can still tell you that the Aleinu, which is up ahead, is on page 158, that the Adon Olam is on page 162, because this is the book I used when I had my bar mitzvah um, a long time ago. I mention that because this was edited by a man named Morris Silverman, Rabbi Silverman, and this is a book of commentaries by his son, Rabbi Hillel Silverman, one of the great rabbis of the generation before me, who, among other congregations, served as the rabbi of Sinai Temple in Los Angeles. And I really like this little book called From Week to Week, which are just paragraph in length commentaries. And because our service this morning is so much fuller, because Esther learned so much of Torah and Haftorah, I thought rather than giving a Devar Torah as such, that I would read three of those little commentaries for you to choose one of those commentaries. My rabbi growing up, Rabbi Moshe Tutnauer, who had also served as an interim rabbi, by the way, at Sinai Temple in LA, one of the great rabbis, uh, said that the test of a sermon is lunch conversation. So here's my prompt for you. I'm going to read you three paragraphs, three commentaries to our Torah reading of Korach. I will add this book that I'm reading from was written 45 years ago. And pick one of these three that you would hold on to and maybe share in conversation. The first. Now Korach, the son of Yitzhar, took men and they rose up in the face of Moses. Rashi explains that Korach was a demagogue, using beguiling oratory to seduce the people. But how could the children of Israel, who had only recently experienced the crossing of the Red Sea and the revelation of the Torah on Mount Sinai, succumb to the, go to the guile of a Korach? Nachmanides, the Spanish commentator of the 13th century, believes that at any other time, the people would have stoned the person who dared question Moses' authority. But Korach's uprising came right after the frightening report brought by the 12 scouts who said, we can't go into the land. This agitator, Korach, exploited the fright and despair of the people, for he sensed that this was an opportune time to foment rebellion. May we exercise caution in times of national and domestic crisis, lest contemporary Korachs use us to under, critically undermine society and thereby contribute to the collapse of our civilization. That's one. Here's a second for you to choose from, to, again, an analysis of the Torah reading. This is from the third verse of chapter 16. Wherefore, then lift up yourselves. Why do you, Moses, lift yourselves up above everybody else? Who makes you, what makes you think you're like above us? Korah and his rebels accused Moses of arrogance and self-aggrandizement. But the Bible makes perfectly clear that Moses was a man of humility and modesty. How could he be so falsely accused? Unprincipled rebellion against authority is frequently based upon false accusations and unverifiable assertions. Sometimes it seems that the more exaggerated the accusation, the more credulous the populace is. We must be aware of the character assassin and the teller of, quote, the big lie. And last, again, I want you to hopefully pick one of these three that you find worthy of continuing to reflect on. 
And now Moses' response. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Rashi explains that Moses fell on his face because of the sin committed by these rebels. This was the fourth transgression during the long march through the wilderness. Was this transgression any worse than the worshiping of the golden calf, the murmuring, the believing the false reports of the scouts? The rabbis explained that Moses had always attempted to appeal to the people's reason and to make allowances for their shortcomings. He judged them with leniency, but now that the mutiny of Korach's company convinced Moses that he had erred and that the children of Israel had willfully committed all four transgressions, at times it becomes counterproductive to overlook the faults of others. There are times for patience and forgiveness. But there are occasions when it is incumbent upon us to speak out and to take preventive and corrective action. Rebona Shalom, Master of the Universe, we are taught in Perkei Avot, the teachings of the sages, Hafechba, Hafechba, Vakuliba, regarding Torah, turn it over, turn it over, for as Ben Bagbag taught, all is in it. May we find in our Torah, challenge and wisdom and may we apply that wisdom to leading lives of service to you our creator amen okay.